This episode is brought to you by my album, Overtime. It's available on all streaming services right now. I have the single at the top, Let It Go. I don't really give a F. All on my new album, Overtime, out right now. So go and stream it at your favorite streaming service. The link is down in the description. Now, let's get into the content. What up, what up, world? It's your homeboy, Wordplay TJ, and I'm back with another video for you. This time around, I'm going to talk about how to collect your royalties and where those royalties come from. Stay tuned. All right, so I don't want to delay. I want to jump into it right away and talk about where all of our streaming royalties come from. But first, I'm going to use a diagram from ariestake.com uh, and talk about like who gets the royalties, um, how that royalty flow happens. So we're going to look at a couple flow charts first, and then we're going to look at the breakdown who gets paid, how they get paid, and how to make sure that you're collecting it. So let's jump into this flow chart here. All right, so this is gonna be my, my ESPN play-by-play. -play. So right now we're looking at the artist royalty flow chart and this would be you um, as an artist. So when you're an artist, you're going to create what's called a sound recording. Um, once you create that sound recording, it's a mixture of the instrumental, it's a mixture of the lyrics, and putting all that together into a final recording, and it's also called the master recording. Once you get done with that, you're going to put that out to streaming services. And sometimes you have a distribution company or a record label help you get that out. So here, you're going to get download sales, um, and you're going to get interactive streaming revenue from all of these companies that be Spotify, Apple Music, uh, YouTube Music, Amazon, pa Pandora, uh, Shazam, and so forth. So that's one thing that you can do with the sound recording and one way that you'll get paid. And so your distribution company or your record label, so most of the, most of the time if you're independent, um, so let's say if you're indie, you're gonna have the distribution company do that for you. Um, or if you're in the record label, they, they will have a distribution company do it, or they will do it themselves and have direct partnerships with these streaming services. And then you, on the other end, get paid. Now, there's other things that you can do with the sound recording. You can get it out to TV, radio, and uh, bars. So I have my music in the jukeboxes and people can go up to the jukeboxes and play that music there. So that's kind of what that is. Um, and then you have digital radio in the US and digital radio in the US is uh, probably gonna be mostly identified with Pandora radio, uh, iHeart radio, other radio stations around. Uh, Django is something that I did a, a video on. And most of those royalties go through sound exchange. Then you have uh, sync licensing, which is using the master recording to put into TV shows, movies, commercials, video games, etc. And that usually happens through a sync licensing company or the record label will do it. And the last thing that you can do with the sound recording is be a part of union based commercials. So uh, union based commercials are when a company has an artist uh, be a part of their commercial, whether it be the music itself or you're acting in the commercial, you would get your SAG card and you will get paid commercial residuals from that. Uh, there's a lot of money involved in that process. So let's go ahead and take a look at the songwriters flow chart. So the songwriters are the people that write the lyrics and people that write the music. These are all songwriters. So this could be, this could be your producer here. And when they finish making the lyrics and the music, that's called the composition. It's uh, put all together into one place. And the main people, the main folks that deal with that composition are performing rights organizations. So PROs like ASCAP, BMI, CSAC, and there's a host of other 
PROs that are in other nations, but these are all in the USA. You go get your streams and your downloads, and then the performing rights organization will pay you as the creator. And this is the person that wrote the lyrics, person that wrote the music. Uh, oftentimes the performer gets a cut too. So that's how that boils down. They also collect royalties from radio, TV, bars, clubs, live music, and uh, other places. And then they filter that back to the person that wrote the lyrics, the person that wrote the music, and the person that performed the song. So mechanical rights organizations like the MLC, uh, you also have Harry Fox Agency. Um, those bodies um, will take the streams that are performed digitally and then they will put it through a publishing admin company or through the MLC, they'll send it directly to you as the songwriter. There's also a royalty or mechanical royalty from downloads on iTunes or other places that do downloads. Um, you get a mechanical royalty in the US, Canada, Mexico. It goes to the record label or the artist. It could also go to a publishing administrating company and then to the people that wrote the lyrics, music, or performed the piece. Also, the rights owner. The other part is over here and that's sync licensing. So it shows up again. Um, so basically, if you made the whole song, you perform the whole song, you can get sync licensing royalties for being the artist and all of these other um all of these other things like the lyric uh writer the the music writer or the producer so uh sync licensing allows you to kind of double dip um when it comes to royalties especially if you made everything by yourself so sync licenses get paid out to the licensing company or the publishing company and then they get transferred back to the lyric writer, musician, or the performer. Let's go on to the next slide. And the first piece is breaking down these distribution companies. All right, so thinking about how to get paid from distribution companies, you want to look at who gets paid first, right? So who gets paid in the midst of working with a distribution company? So for the most part, it is gonna be the record labels or it's gonna be the artist working directly with the uh, distribution company. Some examples of distribution companies are DistroKid, TuneCore, CD Baby. There's a host of others, um, but um, those are my three favorites. So how does it work? The distributor sends music to the retailer and then the distributor provides payment to the label or the artist. That's pretty much how it goes. And this comes from streams, it comes from downloads and other types of sales. What you do to get paid up here. So you will upload your music to a digital distribution service and then promote the heck out of it so you uh, get paid. When we're thinking about performing rights organizations and that's ASCAP, BMI, CSAC, so those people that pay the songwriters primarily, so that's people that make the lyrics or make the music, your producers out there. It could be also the publisher and it could be the performer of the music as well. So if you remember when I was saying that the artist gets an opportunity to kind of double dip sometimes, um, this is an opportunity where folks can double dip. Um, even the songwriter can double dip, right? When it comes to um, making the whole song themselves and then putting it out for sync licensing. So how else does it work? The PRO issues a license for the music to be used publicly. And publicly means out at bars, on streaming services, during live events, um, if it's recorded and used on radio. So all of those public performances count. This is why it's called publishing. So how do you get paid? So songwriters and publishers will register uh, with the PRO and then get an IPI number. That's important. The IPI number is like your social security number for publishing. So you wanna protect that. That's how you get your money. 
songwriters and publishers register their songs in a database and um, the songs are identified when they're streamed or used publicly. And the way they are identified is by the use of metadata. So let's take a look at some examples of metadata. So you got the song title, you got the uh, writers of the song, um, you have the length of the song, um, you have the producers, um, the artists that perform the song, and a host of other specific pieces of metadata. The misconception is that when you work with a PRO, you go and upload your, your song or the file for the song into the PRO. No, you don't upload the song itself. You just tag all of the information about the song and then they will match that with the streaming service. All right, so when thinking about digital rights agencies, so specifically uh, Sound Exchange, we want to know who gets paid, how it works, and ways to get paid. So uh, number one, the performer gets paid from digital radio performances. And some examples, again, of digital radio performances are Pandora, um, also iHeart. You have Django, which is uh, something that I talked about. It's like Radio Airplay is what it's called now. And a host of other online digital radio station. Shout out to DJ Centipede. Um, so once that music is performed on the digital radio station, then the performer gets paid, the featured artist gets paid, and the rights owner, the people that own the master recording, get paid as well. So how it works, Sound Exchange issues licenses for the music to be used on internet radio stations like Pandora, uh, Music Choice, and Sirius XM. Ways to get paid. So performers and rights owners sign up with Sound Exchange. So you got to sign up first as a performer and or a rights owner. And then once you sign up, then rights owners will register their songs in the database to be identified. So this is the same thing as before where we're looking at PROs and we need all this metadata. So we're almost done. Hold on with me and uh, bear with me, we got a couple more slides to go. So the second to last thing I wanna talk about is content ID services because that can cause a lot of confusion. So most digital distributors like DistroKid, CD Baby, et cetera, will have a content ID program. If they don't have a content ID program, you can always use a company like Audium or you can use your publishing administrator to uh, access content ID. Content ID is a body in and of itself, and it is created by YouTube. So when it comes to getting your content ID royalties, you need to be the rights owner, the songwriter, um, or the publisher. How it works is a company will add your original music, it's really important that it's original music, samples, all of that, that stuff, they need to be cleared before you uh, put your music out there. Um, your original music to YouTube's content ID system. And then the content ID system will, will like search through all of the videos on YouTube. And once it finds one, it will flag that video for, uh, for content ID. And it will say, I oh, know this ad revenue is going to go to the person that created this music. And we're not going to um, really pay you ad revenue based off of that situation. Now, there's ways to get around it. You can get permission from the uh, rights owner to um, take down the content ID flag. And that can happen. Or if you have your own channel, you can, um, you can whitelist. That's what it's called. You could whitelist your um, your channel so it's not flagged for your own content. So ways to get paid: um, rights owners will sign up with a company that offers content ID, and it's as simple as that. You will oftentimes upload um, a sound recording, and when you're with distri uh, digital distribution, that's pretty much a part of it anyway. So you upload a recording and you give metadata. Uh, you have to do both of those things in order to uh, totally flag your music 
for royalties. The last thing I want to talk about are publishing administrators. And I have a whole video about publishing admin and all of that stuff. Um, so what I don't want to do is get too bogged in about the details here. Uh, what I want to do is talk about who gets paid, how it works and, and ways to get paid. So the rights owner, the songwriters and the publishers are the main people that sign up with publishing administrators. Right now I'm with TuneCore. Um, I've been with SongTrust before and I still use CD Baby Pro for one song. So how it works, the publishing administrators will manage the catalog. You got to remember that that's their job is to just manage the catalog and the registrations of your entire catalog to all these other places that I mentioned before, except for sound exchange. They don't, they don't register with sound exchange. So they will take your entire catalog and they will help you register that catalog with other agencies. Okay. So this is why they get the 15% that they get. So if you're an artist and you have a lot of music out there and you need the help to organize your catalog, they're going to be the ones that help you do that. And you have to kind of trust them to do that. And, and trust me, look, listen, a lot of people complain about the 15% that they take in order to do all of this work, but I do all this work by myself and I know how hard it is to update your catalog. Garrett can testify to how hard it is to upload, uh, update the catalog because I've asked him to be a part of that, that, um, that process to understand it. And it takes a long time to update those catalogs and it takes a lot of work and they have to hire a lot of people to manage all of that stuff. So they're taking 15% for a good reason. And if you're making like $2, 15% is only a few, uh, a few cents. It's only 30 cents. So give them your 30 cents, dog. Um, <laughs> if you're looking at a lot of money, right? So you're looking at, let's say a hundred dollars coming in. It's only $15 out of your chunk. So, um, let's just not, you know, kind of you know, cry over spilled milk here. So I feel like the publishing administrators are entitled to that 15% and it's not that big of a deal. So if you're making thousands of dollars through publishing administration, then it's not going to hurt you that much. So they will manage your catalog. They will do the uploads. They will do the uh, metadata stuff and they will take care of all the things that they need to take care of in order to get you paid. And that's pretty much their job is they're a body that is designed to get you paid from your music. So that's it. If you have any questions, leave your comments down in the comment section. I appreciate you watching this video. If this is your first time here and you like it, please give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe. If this is your first time here, about 80% of people aren't subscribed to this channel, but watch these videos. So I would appreciate it if you subscribe and until next time, it's your homeboy wordplay TJ. Peace. All right, so the video is over now, and if you liked it, give it a thumbs up. Let me know how you feel about it, and then watch more videos about the same subject up here, and then another video that YouTube recommends down here. Peace.